Hello and welcome to Zigwheels folks. This is our first look at Tata's Harrier and the catch being that we cannot give our opinions on the Harrier just yet. There's an embargo. You'll get the full details what we think about the Harrier at 6 a.m. on the 7th which is very soon. But right now we're going to tell you what the Harrier has on the outside, on the inside and we'll answer some key questions that you've been asking us. So starting off with the design, well, uh, you've seen uh, the H5X concept at the Auto Expo and this is the final version. What you see here in terms of the headlamp setup is this LED DRL here which also doubles up as the indicator uh, light. It doesn't swipe so it's not a dynamic swipe, it just turns uh, orange uh, when you turn on the indicator. And this is actually the headlamp setup, this is an HID projector lamp for the low beam and a halogen for the high beam and this is of course the fog lamp. Now in terms of design, uh, what do you think? Do let us know about that. We aren't going to tell you what we think for now. And uh, when you come along to the side, you're going to find that uh, you've got 17 inch wheels here on the Harrier, right? Uh, could it have done with a bigger setup? Could it, uh, the, do the wheels look stylish enough? Tell us in the comments, a lot of you have been talking about that. And when it comes to the size of this vehicle, that is something that we can talk about. It is big because if you look at the numbers in overall length, it is bigger than the Honda CRV. And this is based on the Land Rover Discovery Sport platform. The wheelbase is 2741 mm, which is massive. That stretch between the wheels is huge. Uh, it is uh, as long as the Discovery Sport. It's a little bit longer than even the Honda CRV. So in terms of size, this is a big vehicle. Even in terms of overall length, it's longer than that. So uh, yeah, it would dwarf something like a Compass or the Creta for that matter. And when you come around to the back, this is of course Tata's design language, the Impact 2.0 at work here. So the slingshot line, uh, there are some, uh, you know, the cladding down here, which uh, is to do with its SUV credentials, of course and the very prominent lights here and well yeah in terms of overall dimensions it is a large suv there's no two ways about it right and now we'll step in i'm gonna hop around to the other side Before we start talking about features, let's get things clear from the base variant which is the XE, the one we are with right now is the XZ. Now the base variant gets dual airbags, ABS as standard. This top of the line version which is the XZ gets, of course it gets ABS, it gets ESC, it gets ESP, it gets 6 airbags and along with the ESP uh, it gets lots of added controls uh, like uh, rollover mitigation, it's got uh, this brake pre-fill system so that you get better braking even in wet conditions. It's basically got a lot of added value like a hill descent control. You've got the switch right here next to the uh, mode control for terrain response. So there's a hill descent. This is of course uh, for wet roads. This is for rough roads and this is of course ESC off. So what these two modes do is change the way the uh, electronic stability control kicks in, the way the throttle maps are. Uh, that is what the Tata engineers have explained to us. So that's what it all does to give you a better uh, sense of control when the, way the conditions are tricky. So that's not all. Even aside from that, you also have other drive modes. So like there is Eco, there is Sport. I'm going to switch the car on while we talk about this. So yeah, we have Eco and Sport. There's that voice that you can hear telling you which mode you've selected. Alright. What do you think about somebody talking back to you? Well, let us know. Well, coming to the one thing that a lot of you have been asking us. Is there a sunroof? Well, the answer is right there. Okay. Uh, the interior. There's this uh, four wood finish here. It's uh, a dark walnut and the similar color for the seats as well. Uh, in terms of features, the obvious ones, as you can see, there's this uh, touchscreen display here, about 8 inches. It's uh, a flat layout in the sense that it's wide uh, and not so tall. And along with that, there's also 7-inch display here for the driver, which shows you revs and 
you notice the top portion of the screen that's the part that also talks to the center infotainment display so let's say if you're using navigation uh, you'll find that the instructions pop up right on top over there so you don't have to keep looking at the screen all the time right uh, right now we don't have a phone connected but right now you can see that the FM uh, display is there what station you're on and uh, if it was connected to a phone uh, via Android Auto there is an Android Auto on offer here I'm just gonna try and connect it to a phone so that you can see that and while uh, we connect it here's a good chance for you to see where the USB port is So we're gonna use Android Auto. Yeah, there you can see that now. You've seen the navigation instructions come up here on the driver's display. And this of course is just an analog speedo. And uh, some other displays here on the infotainment system. I mean for the driver's MID, which includes power and torque. So if I rev it up, you can see how much power torque is being developed at that point in time. Uh, other fuel efficiency related right trip and then we come back here to the main infotainment system this is available on the top end variant of course uh, this is connected to Android Auto and uh, all the various settings that's there for brightness Okay, so uh, another thing that is new here is this park brake cleaver, quite chunky, a lot of piano black used inside the cabin, you can see from the center console uh, to hear the lever and uh, even the surrounds and then there's this storage box here which also has uh, a vent from the air conditioning system so that you can keep some cans here to keep cool if you want uh, right and before I get out the driver's seat eight-way adjustable not power adjustable it's manually adjustable so of course the usual slide back and forth but seat height adjust and uh, re recline of course you have all of that lots of storage spaces inside right thing we didn't talk about was the engine it's a 2 liter diesel with 140 PS of power this engine is called Cryotech by Tata Motors it's basically sourced from Fiat the 2 liter engine that we've seen on the Jeep Compass it makes 350 Newton meters of torque has a manual gearbox uh, no automatic right now no all-wheel drive this is just a two-wheel drive uh, we've spoken about the drive modes so those drive modes work only on the front wheels and coming to the back seat well you can see how much room there is on offer and yes, uh, you do have uh, aircon vents. There is, uh, of course, plenty of headroom, and the aircon vents are here on the B pillar. Mm, you can see good use of uh, silver accents. Uh, there's plenty of them around the cabin, even over here. This is a place to store your phone. There's also a USB port, but it's uh, down here. Well, yeah. There's a lap belt for the middle passenger, so you've got yeah, just about uh, everything adjustable headrest. Now coming to the boot, 425 liters. It's packed right now with all our equipment, and uh, well, the number is for the compass is about 430. So well, you can draw up what you think about it. Right now we can show you how we are using it and uh, you have this grab handle here to shut it. Yeah. So yeah, that's our first look at uh, Tata's new Harrier and uh, we'll be having the full review for you up on Zig Wheels uh, very shortly and on the 7th. So yeah, let us know what you think about it in the comments. Uh, whatever questions you have, we'll try and answer them as quickly as possible. But until the review comes out, we can't be sharing your opinion because there's an embargo. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know what you think about the Harry.